Next on the agenda is actually upgrading some of our younger lemon frost leopard geckos into their observation rack and so that's what i'm going to throw a time lapse of right here all right guys now the lemon frost is an absolutely beautiful mutation but unfortunately it comes with some health risks associated for the animals you can see a couple of lemon frost right here we're getting ready to upgrade into their tub these are actually afghanicus generation one which are also fasciolatus and turkmenicus dna so there's a lot of different wild type DNA going on in here. Our goal with this project is to see if we could clean up the health issues and make beautiful, bright and healthy geckos. The Afghanicus is what's really bringing in a lot of that dark and bold patterning. And then the lemon frost is of course bringing in the bright yellow. Beautiful animals, but not without their fair share of health concerns. So not a recommended pet or breeder for anybody at this time. Last year was the Afghanicus year for our lemon frost experimentation. We already have enough animals to study from Fasciolatus and Turkmenicus, but we need a certain group of animals to study from Afghanicus. Now these are actually just Fasciolatus Turkmenicus lemon frost, no Afghanicus is you can see a lot lighter in coloration compared to the Afghanicus. Because it's less colorful and less saturated of a subspecies, we are actually noticing that there's less health issues with Fasciolatus than there is with Turkmenicus and Afghanicus. And that's very interesting because now we can report this data to scientists and cancer lab researchers, and they could potentially apply this to human research and finding out what genes turning on and off are contributing to animals having better control of tumor expression versus lower or no tumor expression. Fasciolatus, a little bit more darker blacks to this one, but in general, Fasciolatus is gonna be much more lighter in coloration and pigment than Afghanicus. Fasciolatus in general also has a lot of bright yellow pigmentation that comes in around their face. That's not tied to the lemon frost, that's tied to the Fasciolatus. It's really interesting how they will have extra yellow pigmentation on their face when you normally don't see that on regular leopard geckos. It's pretty, pretty cool. Just for reference, here is a non specter lemon frost dad. This one's three years old it's from the original stock that we brought in it's that turkmenicus lemon frost cross generation three so it's 87.5 percent turkmenicus dna in this gecko you can see looking nice and good and healthy after three three and a half years so the outcrossing definitely does seem to work and make improvements to a certain degree it's not a perfect fix but we are still studying it look at those eyes though truly amazing lemon frost eyes that you can see a little bit right there now here is the ghost lemon frost one of our prized possessions over here you can see just how big these animals are this is the size this is the length of my forearm that's got to be 12 13 inches or something right there it is a ridiculously big animal and that's from the turkmenicus blood but you can see the look of this animal is just a bit more lime, pale green in comparison to the first one, which was more of just a yellow. Now that first one was really dark. It just aged really dark for a lemon frost because of the Turkmenicus blood. There's a shot of the lemon frost eyes. Beautiful, amazing. You can see the, the coloration difference in this animal though. Definitely more pale. I'm starting to call it more of like a lime green yellow rather than just a true yellow. This is the original specter line dad right here all right guys we got the lemons updated on their observation rack so starting from the oldest lemons that we have down to the youngest we only have up to this shelf right now full everything there and below is actually other stuff that i'm waiting to build another rack for um so we don't have too many that might be like 60 lemon frost that we're studying right now with a maybe another 20 or so that are in the baby room that will be moving to this rack and that'll be it. We'll have one observation rack for lemon frost over the next 10 years. We'll look to work with scientists. We'll look to make observations on tumor growth or lack of tumor growth, depending on the wild type outcrossing that took place. And that's it. The best you could do is just try to make a difference, especially a difference that could possibly help humanity understand more about cancer and the research that goes into that. They're studying animals already, like mice and zebrafish, and now leopard geckos are added to that list because all three of these animals, including humans, have this one spot of DNA 
that is defective and erroneous in some way and scientists are trying to study how to manipulate that to better fight cancer in human beings. This one science channel, I'll even leave a link to it here in the top right corner, did a video called Frosty, the cancer fighting gecko. And that was the original lemon frost that came into the pet trade at high dollar that wound up producing masses of lemon frost for the pet trade. They did a video on him and his descendants and the studies that have been done, professional studies that have been done in a laboratory setting, studying these geckos and how it can help fight cancer.